If you search Google, there's a bunch of videos on how to upgrade the firmware on an Ender 3 V2. But the difference between those and this one is that I'm gonna make this one easy. My name's Jim and this is The Edge of Tech. What's up everybody? Like I said, today we're gonna go step by step and upgrade the firmware on the Ender 3 V2 again. Now I have done a video about this in the past, but I tell you what, this one is gonna be much better. This one's gonna cover the screen and the board. It's gonna show you how I get the firmware and how to put it on and in the right order. This is a super easy and pretty fast method. So if you're having issues with your printer or you just wanna to upgrade to the newest features that Marlin offers, this is gonna be the video for you. If your printer's working fine, you're not having any issues, and you're not worried about upgrading to the latest features, you probably don't have to do this, so I might skip it unless you just wanna be on the newest firmware. I personally like being on the newest firmware, so today, we're gonna to rock and roll. I'm gonna show you how to do it step by step. Let's go. Now, before we get into this, there's something I have to say. You don't wanna do them in the wrong order. You wanna make sure you do the screen first and then the board. We're gonna go over that pretty quick, but I wanted to throw that out there right away. So what we wanna do first is jump into firmware.th3dstudio.com, which actually brings us to this page. And if we scroll down, we see the Unified 2 firmware. A little bit further down, we find Creality, and then we can look for what printer we're gonna use. In our case, we're gonna do the Ender 3 V2. So we're gonna click on this one right here. This will be all the instruction we're gonna go through today, but we're gonna to try to make it a little bit faster and easier on the video here. So the first thing we wanna do is download the unified firmware, which is right here. So I'm just gonna click it and it's gonna download in the background. Something we talked about before and I wanna bring up again, you have to upgrade the screen first. It says that right here as well. So we're gonna go through that and then upgrade the board. I'm gonna show you how to put your SD card in, get it formatted for the firmware update for the screen, and then we're gonna use a second SD card for the firmware for the board itself. So it's gonna tell you that you always wanna update the screen first. Also, something you need to have is VS Code installed, and there's an installation guide right here and it walks you through everything you need to know. VS Code is the program you're gonna open the configuration in and edit, and then it'll compile the firmware from there. So VS Code needs to be installed, that's right here, it's super simple. Also, it's down below in the instructions below, it'll tell you how to do that as well. For this video, I'm gonna assume that you guys have VS Code, or before you go any further, jump into that installation guide, the link will be in the description of the video, and We'll make it happen. Then what we wanna do is open up our area where we just downloaded the firmware. I've already downloaded it a couple times doing this video. Uh, we're gonna open up that firmware and right away you'll see something called LCD firmware. And this is for the Ender 3 V2. We're gonna click into it. Right away you'll see this LCD update. Right click and extract all. That'll say, you know, where do you wanna extract it? If you leave that default, it'll extract it right to this folder hit that extract button and you'll get this folder here. Now this specific folder, the dwin underscore set folder, has to be put on a specially formatted SD card. And we're gonna do that right now. So you wanna take a micro SD card that came with the printer's fine and pop it into the computer. Now what we're gonna do is gonna delete the contents of this SD card. If you have anything on there that you wanna save, this is your time to save it off now. We have to format this card and it's gonna lose everything. So if you need to save everything off, you wanna do that right now. In this case, there's just a firmware and I'm not worried about it, so we're gonna keep rocking. I'm gonna go down here to where that volume is. It, in this case, it says it's new volume F. I'm going to right click and format. We format it with an allocation unit size of 4,096 bytes. It's very important that you do that. I've tried it other ways with hit or miss results and if I do it 4096, I have the best results. FAT32, 4096 bytes. We'll do a quick format and just hit start. There you go. Once it's done, it'll pop itself back up. We'll hit okay and we can close this. So now what we need to do is, this is our dwin underscore set folder. We're gonna right click the whole folder. We're gonna copy it we're gonna go into that volume we just created and we're going to paste it. At this point, your screen firmware SD card is good to go. We wanna right click on that and eject. And now you're good to go with your screen firmware SD card. And we're gonna jump onto that in just a minute. What we need to do is open our VS program here 
And what we need to do is open our firmware. So we go to File, Open a Whole Folder. Then you want to go to wherever you downloaded your firmware. It's in Downloads in my case. We're going to uh, double click. We're going to go to Firmware. And this is everything. So I'm going to go back one. So you just want to go to Downloads, open up your firmware, click on and highlight the folder called Firmware. You don't have to go any further than that and just hit Select Folder. What that's going to do is put it here in the left side. If you open up that left side and you come down here to Marlin and open that up, you'll find something called configuration.h. Now in configuration.h, this is where we actually configure our firmware. So when you first open this up, everything will be just like this, kind of green colored. What we need to do is figure out which printer we're going to use the firmware for and then go ahead and compile the firmware for that board. In my case, I have the Ender 3 V2 and I have a 422 board. So I'm going to click right here. Um, we're going to go backwards and uncomment those two wax out. So when you uncomment something out, you're just deleting the two wax like this. You're just going to delete them out like that. You'll see it works. This will turn into like a pink and a blue color there. So in our case, I have the Ender 3 version 422 board. Uh, the best way to find out which board you have is to actually just open up the case and look at the board directly. I know mine is a 422 board because I've done that in the past. Uh, I don't remember if I showed that in the, the rest of this video, but I do know that you need to figure that out before you go any further. If you have a newer one, it's probably a 427 board, but you want to make sure, open up the control board, look inside at your board, and just make sure it says 422 or 427 on the board. Once you get this far, uncomment that out and in this case we're going to add that easy abl uh, to ours so i'm going to scroll down here a little bit further and you'll find right here easy abl probe mounts uh, i'm going to go down to the ender 3 v2 oem and just uncomment that out as well now if you do not have an easy abl then leave that commented in and you don't have to do anything else all we're going to do is compile if you do have an easy abl you want to uncomment this out like this. And then all you have to do is come down here to the checkbox, hit that button, and it'll start compiling your firmware. Depending on the speed of your computer, this can take maybe five, six, 10 minutes. Uh, you just, it really depends on how fast your computer is. I don't have a too bad of a computer. This only usually takes a couple minutes for me. So once it's done, you'll see right down here at the bottom of the screen that it was a success and we need to go find that firmware to put it on an SD card. Uh, to find the firmware we just compiled, go up to the left side here. You can minimize that Marlin uh, folder there, and you want to drop down the PIO folder right here. You want to click into Builds, and then you'll see this one right here, which is STM32 whatever. Uh, you want to right-click that and Reveal in Explorer. That'll bring up your file explorer here, with the location that it saved your firmware in. You want to double click on it and chances are if this is the first time you've done this you only have one but we're looking for a dot bin firmware. The one we just did is actually this one right here. It, chances are if you haven't done this a bunch like me you'll only have one in there. So you want to right click this bin folder here make sure it's the correct one if you have multiple. Hit copy. You want to plug in a new SD card and paste it right onto the card. And that's just like I showed you with the other one, with the exception of you don't have to format it in 4096 bytes. It can be anything. Actually, you could do the screen and then pop the SD card back in and put this firmware on it and then do the board if you really wanted to, if you only have one SD card. But uh, all you have to do is copy, put this actual bin folder right directly on that SD card and then eject your SD card and pull it out and that's it. Now what we do is go from here to the printer and we're going to show you how to get started on installing the screen and the board firmware on the printer. Let's do it. Now it's time to upgrade the firmware on the screen. We have to do that first. So with the printer unplugged and off, we're going to pop up the screen and we're going to flip it around like this. We're going to pull the little cable out just like that. And we need to take these four bolts out right here. So once we got it flipped over, we got the cable out, we're going to grab our Allen wrench and we're going to take these out. Now I'm using the TH3D uh, tool kit that they sell. It is on sale now for like $12.99 at the time of this 
but um, you can use the Allen wrench that came with the kit as well. This is just a 2.5 bit, I believe. Once you get it off and your bolts are out, go ahead and pop off that back. You might have to take a small flathead and, and pop up one side, but it will come out. So what we're gonna do next is take a SD card and it goes in this slot right here. I'm gonna zoom in and show you that when we put it in there. But there's just a metal piece right here. That's where your SD card goes. And it's gonna slide in right here. So once you have the back off, grab your SD card and it's gonna go in this slot like we talked about. You push it in until it springs. Just like that, it locks in. And now what we need to do is plug it into the printer. Once your SD card is in, you wanna plug in your cable, your ribbon cable right here. Then you wanna spin the screen around so you see it like that. And we're gonna turn on the printer. So when we turn it on, it should go from black to orange. And once we should see orange here in a second. All right, there's blue. Blue's good. There's orange, okay. So after about 30 seconds of orange, I wouldn't give it a minute, but after the 30 seconds of orange, you can turn your printer back off and then go to the next step. I'm gonna jump in just to take one second and say if you're getting value out of this video, please hit that like button right now. It really helps push the video out to more people in the community that could be looking for it just like you. Thank you so much, I really appreciate it. Now back to the video. So it's been about one minute. I'm gonna flip the printer off. It'll turn off. I need to take the SD card out. So we'll press the button and eject it and pull that SD card out. And then before I put anything back together, I'm gonna spin the screen around one more time and just fire the printer back on to make sure it all worked. So I'll turn the printer back on. And on the screen, now we have TH3D Marlin. That's how you know this works. It'll have that TH3D and the Marlin splash screen. So now our screen is ready. So before we upgrade the printer, turn the printer off, flip the screen back over, take the ribbon cable out, and install your back panel back on with those four screws. Then put your ribbon cable back on, slide the screen back on the mount like it came off, and then we'll move on to upgrading the printer. Now to update the machine firmware, we just take our SD card and we stick it in, and we turn on the machine and we see what happens. We got the SD card in, I turned the 3D printer on, and now we should see it go from black to the splash screen here. And then once it's complete, as you see, there we go, it'll go to the main screen. Once it all loads up, so you wanna scroll over to control, scroll down to info, then look at the firmware line here that says TH3D Unified Firmware 2.27. Now in this case, at the time of the filming, this is the newest one, 2.27. In your case, it could be much newer. I know Tim's working on a new release now, so that'll change shortly. But right now it's 2.27, we are good to go. So what we need to do now after we load a new firmware is restore the EEPROM. And we can do that from the control panel, I believe, by going to control, scroll down to restore defaults and hit that button. Now that should have reset your EEPROM, just like that, you hear the button and we should be good to go now. If not, I'm gonna put in the description below the Marlin commands if you wanna hook it up to a computer and use uh, Octoprint or anything like that to connect, I'll give you the Marlin commands to reset your EEPROM from there as well. But in this case, I went to restore defaults, hit that button and we should be golden. And that's it, that's all we have to do to do the firmware on the Ender 3 V2, including the screen. So that's it. We've just successfully put the TH3D Unified Firmware on an Ender 3 V2. And with the downloads, it probably only takes about 15 minutes. It's not bad at all. It's actually harder to take the screen off of this thing and update that than the rest of the whole process. So if you got this far, you guys are awesome. Let me know below in the comments. Have you guys ever upgraded your firmware? Do you plan to upgrade your firmware? Maybe that's why you're watching this video. Let me know, I'll be watching in the comments below. I'm always curious what you guys have to say. All in all, it's a pretty simple process like we talked about. Just always do the screen first on this model and then the board and you'll be fine. Just make sure as we walk through that you see those checks, make sure that the firmware flashed correctly and you won't have any issues. Well, I hope you guys learned something today, and as always, keep printing. Hey everybody, I hope you guys liked the video. Hit that thumbs up if you did. If you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. 
and then the bell right over here if you want to get notified anytime we go live or put another great video out like this. Don't forget, you guys are awesome.